Structuring your practice. How do you structure your practice so that you have tangible tasks that you could say, well, I need to do X, Y, Z, and you could even check it off at the end of your practice so you know you had an efficient practice. Okay, this is, this is a follow-up from what we just talked about, learning another, a new piece, okay? We use the JS Bach invention number 13 as an example. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Maybe before watching this one, it might, it might help a lot, okay? We talk about breaking down the learning process into, into small doable steps, okay? So this whole thing, you know, of planning your practice is a balance between <clears throat> being uh, being let's say order and chaos in a way because you're finding the balance between the rigidity of having a plan and having these steps taking the time to plan it out and saying i'm going to do it exactly this way but also having the freedom to go with the flow in your practice because that's teaching you a lot so it's really a fine balance between the two not just showing up to the piano and being like well i'm just going to be in the flow i don't care what i'm doing and you don't even know what piece you're practicing or what you got done and having just something of an outline that's going to help you go in the right direction but of course without being too rigid in that outline tangible tasks what are the tangible tasks depending on the piece that, that you're looking at or the practice that you have in front of you so i think the first thing would be to decide well what pieces am i going to work on you know, am I going to work on, let's say you have five different pieces. Some of them are new. Some of them you've known for a while. You should have an idea right away. Well, I'd, I need to look at these three pieces. I don't care about the other two, but these three, I'm really working on them. I like to focus on a certain piece for several days so that you can really you know, build a, a little momentum in your practice. That's the, no, the number one thing is what, what piece are you playing? Okay, let's say, you know, you say, um, why don't we stick with this Bach invention number 13 as an example. Now, I'm going to practice Bach invention number 13. I don't think the time is so important, like for an hour, for 20 minutes. It's just, I would look at it this way. You have a kind of picture of the piece in front of you, depending on where you're at with it. Maybe you know, okay, well, I, I know the beginning pretty well. The end is not so bad, but I, I, have, I have a bunch of little problems and, and little obstacles at the end. And there's that middle part that I, I really hate and I can't get through. It's terrible. Okay, good. So that's one thing. Now you have a sort of perspective on what, what's in front of you with that piece. I would recommend start with the difficult part. So that that could be one way one of the first way that you're structuring your practice after deciding what you're going to work on you can decide to start with what's difficult don't start with the beginning start with the most challenging thing while you're the most fresh okay now this is why the other video is important because it's it's very essential to be able to break those steps into you know easy doable steps of learning the piece because you can't tell yourself, well, okay, I have to play through that. I have to learn that whole middle section that I'm not good at until I have no mistakes. It might not be realistic. You might not be there yet. So you'd have to know, well, how, that's too much for me. Okay, I, I, know, I know I won't get there in one day. So maybe I have to just, you know, make sure I can play through the right hand with the right rhythm at, uh, at X tempo uh, with no mistakes from here to here, I know that's manageable. And if you can't do it, then maybe four bars was too much. Just take two bars, you know? So that's a kind of way that you're breaking things down. Then what I would recommend is that you be able to do it three times in a row with no mistake, because now you're starting to kind of, um, in a way, program, program yourself to play that piece there. When you've played it three times in a, in a row, you reinforce what you learned. Usually when you play it, you know, once without mistakes, it's the first time you ever played it without mistakes. So you've played it like a hundred times wrong and one times right. So I would do that several times. So, okay, what about, what about something like memorization? Okay, <coughs> let's say you're memorizing the piece. So you might, again, you have to know what's a tangible task. So for me, when I'm memorizing something, I usually a page is about as much as I can handle. If I'm on fire, maybe I'll do two or three pages, but most of the time I just find it kind of laborious. 
and a page is, is quite a bit. You know, that's, that's a, a fairly good day if I'll memorize a whole page. Depends on the music. Some things are easier to memorize than others. But let's say something complicated. Maybe a page is too much and you know that. So you give yourself, you know, just a line or maybe even just one bar or sometimes, and I'm not kidding, it can be just one note, you know? You can be just adding one note or one chord or just one thing in your practice that I need to get to one next step in memorization. Now, memorization is, is kind of tricky and you have to re-memorize what you memorize anyway because you forget it the next day. So that could be another step, you know, is, well, what did I memorize yesterday? I memorized that page or this line or whatever. Okay, let's review that today. That, that can be another tangible step. Okay. Um, fingering is similar, you know, maybe you've identified a place where, okay, I have a really crappy fingering here. Maybe I can just make one adjustment. It might be even just one, one note, you know. Or maybe it's a whole section, you say, well, or a whole page, you know, let's, let's figure out, you know, it might not be the best fingering for now, I'll run it by my teacher, but, you know, let's figure out the fingerings that we're gonna, that could be the best for me on this page now. Maybe a page is too much. So again, you're breaking it down into a smaller step. If, it, if that feels overwhelming, it might be just a bar, you know, you just look at, write down a couple of numbers there for just one bar. Same thing back to uh, Tim's uh, point about, you know, when you hear something that's not right, okay, I know there's a mistake here. You might have an idea, you know, maybe you play through the piece from beginning to end if you're at that point, right? You're able to put the hands together, you're getting through it, but you know, you have a bunch of knots to untie. Then you have a kind of diagnostic, you know, that can be another step, maybe at the beginning of your practice. So let's say I've been working on Bach Invention number 13 for you know, two months, I'm able to put the hands together, but I'm not very good. Some parts are good, some parts are not so good. All right, so may, maybe you're at the point where it's constructive to play it from beginning to end. So first thing I'm gonna do is play it to, from beginning to end and do a little diagnostic. So I know, you know, where I can identify at least where some of the problems are. You probably won't remember them all. Then you can choose one thing to tackle. You know, and again, you find, you break it down into steps that's going to make it easy for you to do that. Okay, I'm going to give another example here. This, we're going to jump to a different piece. Let's say I'm going to pull out this, this is Beethoven Sonata number seven, the third movement. I'm just kind of using a, an example with one of my students had a problem and fixed this. Okay, so this is, uh, this is how it goes, goes, whoops, like this. Okay, that could be one little problem there. Okay, we're gonna take that. All right, let's say I have a student who has a, a problem uh, here. Uh, I would probably identify his mistake. This is why it's so much easier to work with an actual person, you know, when we do the master classes or something than kind of hypotheticals like this, but. Let's say he has a mistake here. Okay, all those mistakes. <laughs> Let's say there's, he's always doing a mistake here. All week after week I hear that. Let's say it was there, okay? So I would say, fix this. Can you fix this for next week? I'm tired of hearing the same mistake all the time. Fix it. Okay, so that could be a task in the practice. It's like, all right, I'm making a little plan for my practice. I'm gonna fix that thing, okay? So. 
right? What we don't want to run into is this situation where like, I can't do it. Uh, no matter what I do, it's always wrong, okay? So if you're in that case, probably you got to break it down to a more simple step, all right? So it could be really helpful to identify exactly what the mistake is. You know, I'm doing a hypothetical here, so I have to invent one. Let's say he does that. Well, what is the mistake? You have to be able to somehow find out what that is. What is wrong? You know? <laughs> it kind of works, but there's a mistake. Usually that's the kind of, th of thing that, that a student might not fix, right? Because, well, I get through it. It doesn't force me to stop. It sounds almost right. So, I don't know. How are you going to figure out what the mistake is? I'm sure some of you already figured it, figured it out, right? You know, if you haven't figured out already that it's the D sharp, right? I'm playing a D natural. And I'm adding another note there because the C is sharp and I added a C natural. So instead of playing, uh, this is the right thing, D sharp, D, C sharp, B. This is a whole tone, this is a half tone. Someone's doing this, you know, that's the problem we want to fix here, that mistake. Okay, so you might have to go note by note if, if you're really not able to find out what the mistake is, but hopefully your teacher's pointed out to you so you know that it's that D sharp there, okay? So what would you do to fix that? Probably by now you've done this the wrong way so many times that it's such a habit that every time you play through this, fourth finger automatically goes on the D natural instead of the D sharp, right? That's usually what happens here. So then you'd need an antidote. So what I would do is, if you're able to do that, you should be able to do that. If you can't do it, maybe you'll just do it with one hand. Right? We're breaking it down to the easiest step possible for you. So it might be just those five notes. You can certainly do that. And then you could, you know, if you're decent here, you'll add the left hand and repeat it a couple of times so that it's Yes, your, your, your motor memory is going gonna, is gonna to help, right? Your motor memory is going to help. Because at least it'll get you to repeat the same thing, reinforce the good habit here, and kind of get rid of what, what was not working before, the bad habit, right? So once you've done that, you might be like, great, I fixed it. Yeah, and then you come back. Ah, same mistake again. Darn it, I thought I fixed it, right? That's normal because you're just kind of isolating this little part here. You're just isolating this. And you haven't really put it in context. So eventually, yeah, you want to be able to get it right when you play from here to here, let's say. Right? So... So what I would do is I would still stop here. I would still stop there, just so this is not too long, right, of a section to work on. Good, I got it, my D sharp. Again. Yes, I got it, twice in a row. Maybe, ah, oh, darn it, okay, let's start over again. Get it at least three times in a row, if not five or ten, you know, if you're really obsessive, then I'm sure you won't make the mistake again. Uh, then, okay, good, yeah, then, then you have that, no problem, I can play from, from here to here, no problem, good. So now let's, let's do the bigger section again. Yeah, maybe there's not a little mistake there, but you just work on one thing at a time.
right? And then after that, put it in the grand context. See if you can start at the beginning of the piece and not make that mistake again. And if you could do that three times, then you know you've, you've really fixed that problem. So, okay, that was a little uh, an example of how we break down some kind of task that's a little vague, like, okay, fix this problem here. There's a little, you know, mistake at the top of that scale or something, and how to break it down into the most simple steps for you, whatever that might be. Hi, LLM. Good evening from Mallorca. Nice, from Mallorca. Um, I went to Mallorca once and visited uh, Valdemosa, where uh, Chapin spent a lot of time. Artifaka, hi Artifaka. When do you begin to tackle the piece practically after studying the material? Or do you just begin playing and studying in a aftermath? <clears throat> I think everyone has their own strategy. I like to just start playing because I'm just kind of like can't wait to get into it sort of thing. You know, I've heard some people who would just like study, study, study the score, like until they know it inside out and they haven't played one note yet. You know, I, I don't, I'm not like that. That's a little too hardcore for me. Um, is it useful? Yeah, maybe, you know, I mean, I think you can definitely take it too far. So I like to jump right into it. That's, that's my style, you know, I'll just jump into it. And then as I get through it, you know, I start to figure things out. I think one of the reasons why is, you know, if you're able to at least get, you know, most of the right notes down, you'll hear what they sound like. And, and that sound stays in your ear and, and you kind of learn it even throughout the day just while you have these sounds in your head, you know. So I would get a, a balance uh, from all that. Renato, Fra hi Renato Fraga from Texas. Uh, Renato is one of our recent patrons. If you want to become a patron, visit our Patreon page. We've got a new microphone here, guys. No, no more of that uh, fitness headset anymore with the p -p 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 weird uh, P's and T's and, and a strange sound and bad audio quality from it. So I hope this is a step up. So there we have it, guys. I think that's, that covers it all for today. I hope this video was helpful. I did, you know, I did plan a little bit how to do this. Look, I even took notes. So I'm not just winging it today. Um, although sometimes I feel like I'm better when I'm just winging things. And um, yeah, I rewatch the questions that I answer that you've asked. And sometimes I feel like I could do a better job of answering them after I've had time to think about it. So, so I might go over some of those things that we talked about, like, you know, how often should you learn a new piece, for example. Boy, I think that one was really popular. I was very surprised. It was, it was one of the better, uh, more popular, more viewed uploads of the week. And I wasn't expecting that. So I think we're definitely going to bring that subject up again. How often do you learn a new piece, you know? And basically, that's it. So take care, everybody. Thanks for joining. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's always a big help. When you come to my master class, we're going to look at all this stuff together. Peace. Over and out. Take care. Bye-bye.